Hey guys, this is Chris Fate with Cheat the Game. Just quickly, I wanted to, uh, I was asked a good question on the Discord channel earlier, and I thought it'd be a good one to go over since it's really hard to find some information on this. And, and the way I'm going to show you is probably a longer way to do this, but I'm sure there's easier ways to do this. However, this is just what I use. It's what I was taught to use, and it's just what I use. So this is kind of hard to find on the net, but what I'm going to show you is how to actually compare a double value now if you remember double values they actually take up it's a long value that takes up two addresses that's why it's called a double okay because it's actually the whole value is in two separate addresses side by side with each other so to compare a double value you need to compare both addresses okay so like I say, I know that there's probably easier ways to do this, okay, but right now I want to show you the longer route just so you can understand it of what's actually going on, okay? Now if you would like to put down there in the comments easier ways, by all means feel free to, okay? That's that's fine with me. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the uh, cheat engine tutorial. And let's go ahead, I'm just gonna skip this part. And what we're going to do is you see here the ammo is 100, but it is a double value. That means this 100 is being stored as a double 100, which is taking up two addresses in memory, actually. So let's go ahead and attach Cheat Engine to the game. And let's go ahead and find that ammunition value. We'll put it on double, and we'll just go ahead and put in 100. Do a first scan, and we only come up with one address, and that should be it. We'll just test it right quick. Yep, and that's it. So let's go ahead and put on the debugger, find out what accesses the address. Also known as a breakpoint on access. And let's fire another round. Alright, great. And this is everything that's going on with it. We can see the subtraction. This is where it's being stored. Now let me explain this right quick because I don't know if I explained it that well in the Back to Basic series. This is using, when you see instructions like this, F sub R and FSTP, let's get a, this is actually where it's writing it, storing the value into our MO address. Let me explain that to you. This is what's using, or known as the using the FPU stack. Instead of moving a value and just, you know, doing its math with the value in the address itself or in another register, it's actually loading it onto the float pointing unit stack and doing its math on top of that stack and then storing it back into the address. So it's just, it's basically using the stack itself as a register to do math in. That's all it's doing. And uh, if we take a look, we can see what's going on with the FPU stack right here. FPU registers and everything. Uh, we can see that this is what our MO cap is. This, we, we can see what our current MO is. And basically, it's, it's just the float pointing unit stack. It's, it's separate from the register stack that we normally use, but it still operates the same as a stack, you know. First on, last off. You know, same rules apply and everything using the stack. So, I'm not getting into a, a stack lesson here, but it's the float pointing unit stack. So, that's what it's doing. It's loading the new value on top of the uh, FPU stack. It's subtracting from that. And then it's storing it back to the ammo address. Okay, and that's what it's doing. And then it pop, that P means it's popping it off the stack. A lot of times you'll see FST and not a P. That means go ahead and copy that value back into that address, but don't don't pop it off the stack. Leave it on there where they're still using it. They're going to probably store it somewhere else and do some more math with it. But once you're completely done with the value on top of the stack, you add the P on there to pop it off the stack. You're completely done with it for right now. Okay, so that's all it's doing. Basically, when you see this, it's just using the FPU stack to do some math. Is all it's doing. But what we're going to do is we're going to affect it right when it goes to store it. So it can load a value onto the stack, subtract it all it wants to. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the ammo value. And when it reaches uh, 90 double, we want it to automatically move in 5,000. And to make it do that, we need to be comparing the current double MO value, 290. And we need two addresses to do that. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Let me go ahead and save what I got and I'll be right back with you. 
All right, thank you guys for holding. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. I'm going to go ahead and press auto assemble and use we'll use the AOB template. And I'm just going to label this compare double. Just for tutorial purposes, this is what we're doing. This is basically all this lesson's about. It's not about passing the scenario. It's just about teaching you how to compare a double, okay? So what we're going to need is we're going to need two different double values. One for the 90 that we want to compare and the other 5,000 double that we want to move into our ammo address. So let's go ahead and make spaces for that. For one, I'm going to allocate space just to show you you can do it either way. One, I'm going to allocate space for it. Now, I'll use the... Uh, we're just going to call this my double and we'll put uh, the 5,000 ammo in new men okay but this is going to hold the 90 that we are allocating okay so we want to put this somewhere above new men or somewhere underneath the return just so it's not interfering at all because it's in its own space okay so we need to keep it away from underneath new men if possible okay so my double and we're going to declare a keyword, which is a quad word, a double value of 90. And that's going to be our compare amount. Then I'm just going to make a regular label for our ammo 5000. And I'm just going to call this new underscore ammo. This will be the new ammo value. And we want to put this just somewhere in new men that's not going to interfere with code execution. And what it will do is assign this one a spot in new mem. And we're going to put the define a keyword or declare a keyword of a double. And this will be our 5,000. Okay, so now we got two different symbols that we're going to be using. We don't need to register a symbol because we're not using it outside of the script. So since we're not using it outside of the script, we're not, we don't need to register a symbol for it because the script will recognize it within itself. So, or the cheat engine will recognize it within the same script. All right, so we know right here that this right here is uh, float, store, and pop. So it's taking the value off the stack and storing it into this address and then popping that value off the stack. It's completely done with it. If it was FST, like we talked about earlier, then it would copy the value that's on top of the stack, move it in that address, but yet still keep that value on the stack as well. Okay, but it's completely done with it, and we just want it to store in there. So let's make it recognize when it reaches 90 first, and we need to compare that 90 with the address here. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to borrow a register because we need to move our 90 into a register to compare with our current ammo so i uh, we can pretty much use any one of them but ebx i see ebx is already being used right here so we just want to use one that's not in current operation and i know ecx is used right here but we can use it for our purposes up here because we'll give it back before it ever hits that op code so let's just borrow ecx we'll put push ecx so it's pushing that onto the regular stack the value that's in there on the regular stack we can use it for whatever we want as long as we uh put the value back in there and we're going to do that all right so what first thing we want to do is we want to move into ecx that value of double 90 in there which is my double it's being recognized as my double that double 90 and this is the first part of the address remember there's two addresses using a double so we need to compare both of those addresses so the first thing we need to do also the current ammo is using two addresses. This is just that 498 is just the first part of the address. 49C, which is four bytes away, is the second part of that double value. So keep that in mind also, because we that's going to come into play also. Alright, anytime you're dealing with doubles, you're dealing with two addresses. Two four byte addresses. Okay? Alright. So now that we got our double 90 moved into ECX, what we want to do is compare our ammo value cmp just regular compare 
to ECX. And this is just regular. This is just the first part of that double value. Jump if greater to code, which means if it's greater than 90, go ahead and jump to code. But the first, the very first address of my double is going to be all zeros. Remember, Indian this is going to be stored in reverse. The 90 is going to be in the second address, and the zero is going to be up front. So it's just that it can hold huge values. Is all. But for a 90, it's just going to be all zeros and then the the regular number. All right. But what we need to do before that jump to jump of greater to code, let's go ahead and pop ECX. Give it back to the system so it can cycle on through because it's going to jump down here if it doesn't meet and everything. So as long as it's compared, it's going to remember this compare. So you can go ahead and pop ECX. So it's still going to remember what the compared value was to perform it correctly. So it doesn't matter if you go ahead and pop this directly after the compare or not. Okay. Okay. Now what we need to do is compare the second part of that 90 with the second part of the double ammunition, the current ammunition. Remember, they're taking up two four byte addresses. That's why it's called a double. So what we need to do is we need to borrow ECX again. And what we want to do this time is we want to move into ECX, my double. We need the next address the address that's next to it that's holding that 90 which will be plus zero four that makes sense to you we're moving the second half of that double value into ECX to be compared it's two ad it uses two addresses which also means that this our current ammo is also using two addresses so when we compare it we're going to have to compare it to the address over which will be 49C. Does that make sense to you? So now that's the second half of our current ammo value being compared to the second half of our 90. Okay? So in other words, both of these are going to have to match to meet both conditions to go down to write our 5,000. Both of these have to match eventually they will because both are going to be the same exact value to meet both conditions let's go ahead and pop ECX so as soon as all zeros are found here and our 90 value found in this address right here to match this it will not meet the condition to jump if greater to code so it will not jump here so we need to tell it what to do next so what we're going to do here is FSTP ST0 in the parentheses. Basically, all we're telling it to do it is just take that value that's currently on there, which will be a 90, because that's what the current would have got down to, and just disregard it. And what it's going to do is just store it there and wait for another value to take its place. But it's not going to store it into any viable address or anything like that. It's just going to get rid of it. This just helps clean off the stack. That's basically all that does. And what we're going to do is we're going to load our own value onto that FPU stack keyword pointer because it is a double and we're going to load our new ammo which is 5000 we're just going to load it onto the FPU stack we just load it in by its symbol name it's going to say uh, load the value stored at new ammo onto the FPU stat. Computer is going to say, okay, what is that value? It goes and sees it here. It is a double 5,000. No problem. And it loads that value onto the FPU stack. What do you want me to do with that value? I want you to store it. I want you to go to the FPU stack and store it to our address. And I want you to pop it back off the stack. Just remember, I want you to store the entire double to this address, and then I want you to jump to return. We're done. And that's it. So if everything goes well, once it reaches 90, it should move the 5,000 into our current double ammo. But I needed you to understand why we had to use two addresses. This double 90 at this location is taking up two four byte addresses okay if I went to this spot in memory we can go take a look at it 
right here this double 99 this is our current ammo let me show you what it's doing why don't you take a look so let's uh, see it in its double form which is this let's also see it in its four byte form this will help you see it better two addresses this right here is our double 99 our current ammo it's using both of those at this address right here is that 498 offset 498 this is what it, the address is holding the double 90 here is the 49c that's actually holding the other half of the double value that's why we needed to use both okay and also our values that we wrote in our script are being stored exactly like that that's why we had to use both you understand I hope I hope that makes sense to you but if all goes well it should just count down like normal and then once we reach 90 I'm just gonna label this compare double script change that to lowercase there we go and we're gonna turn it on so if all goes well it should just count down like normal let's see it's going 98.5 so we go down and as soon as it hits 90 it should move the 5,000 so here we go the next one will be a 90 so the next time we hit it should be 5,000 boom take a look and that's how to do it fellas I mean that's the long way around and I tried to explain everything I, I forgot about the FPU stat being in there, so I wanted to give a go over that quickly with you, just so you understand how, how I was actually uh, writing the script this way. Because I know the FPU stat does still confuse some of you. I get questions about that too, but we'll go over more about the FPU stat later and just deal with that. But right now, all I want you to get out of this is how to compare a double. Okay? This is what you need to understand, and that will help you. All right. Well, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut on out of here. I hope this was helpful for you, and uh, we will continue on this week. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I want to thank the partners right quick. These guys keep, keep the game running. What for these guys, we have to give a long time ago. I want to congratulate her STE for winning the $25 Steam prize wallet that he will be receiving this week. And uh, those funds will be transferred over to him. And hopefully we can have another contest in the very near future and hope to get more of you involved. So come on over to Patreon. Come over to our Discord, our Facebook, as well as our website. We're happy to help you with any questions you may have. Thank you so much for coming out, and I will see you next time. You all take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, it doesn't mind cheating. You all take care. Now.